Can you tell me your name and who you're with? It's April with Infinite Wolf's Animal Rescue Society. And why are you here today? Uh, we're here to change the animal laws um, in Alberta. And we're specifically here because we rescued a dog in January uh, named Shania and she was shot with a gun. And she had been left uh, with those injuries for at least a month. Uh, she had a fractured femur and she also had um, a big gash on her abdomen. So we were actually rescuing eight other puppies at the time when we saw Shania. We took her into the vet and they found that she had a huge, huge fracture on her uh, back leg. And the vets recommended to amputate and some other vets recommended to do the surgeries to save her leg. So we did two surgeries to save her leg. And during one of her checkups, we found out that she was pregnant and she was pregnant with these puppies. So she gave birth to nine puppies. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, one of those puppies did pass away, but the other eight are um, happy and healthy and doing amazingly. So this is Shania. Shania. Hello, Shania. 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 Hi, baby. Hi. <laughs> and all of her puppies are here today to support uh, the changing of animal laws in Alberta. So we are currently charging the the one who left Shania with her injuries for at least a month. We're charging him and we hope that the new laws will come into play when we go to charge him with animal cruelty. Um, and her puppies, are they going, are you going to be putting them up for adoption if someone... Yeah, they're all they're up interested? for adoption. Yeah. Um, some of them have been adopted already, mm -hmm. uh, pre-adopted. So we're going to keep them in our care until they're old enough to be spayed and neutered and vaccinated and microchipped. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to go to their new forever homes. So this is actually Shania's uh, new mommy. <laughs> and she's doing fantastic. Her leg's still not 100%, but eventually it will be. Um, she's in rehabilitation right now, and she's doing a lot better than, than when she first came in. She's very, very sweet. How old is Shania, or do you She's about three years, we're thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and they have not changed the wording of the legislation to make it easily enforceable and obtain convictions. Case in point is Bill S 203 on April 17, 2008. It increased the penalties, but without changes to the wording of the legislation, it made it still nearly impossible to get a conviction. The new bill, C-232, to amend the criminal code, provides for a maximum of five years in prison if the indictment of cruelty is treated as an indictable offense. Otherwise, it is a summary conviction, and that penalty will be a maximum of $10,000 and or a prison term of mo no more than 18 months or both. From, it all uh, Hope yes. Okay. Hope yeah, and, uh, oh. It also changes some of the wording, so the the intent to be proven guilty may no longer be necessary. Under the under the new bill 205 to amend the Animal Protection Act. The maximum fine is $25,000 or imprisonment for a term not exceeding six months or both for a first offense. For a second offense, a $35,000 fine or imprisonment for a term not exceeding six months or again, both. For a third or subsequent offense, a $50,000 fine or imprisonment for six months or both. It also changes one particular part of wording that I am very happy with, that the court must, not may, it must, make an order restricting the owner to have custody of an animal for a period of time specified by the court. I personally support both of these initiatives. Unfortunately, I feel that a complete rewrite of both of these pieces of legislation is necessary. Based on my experience, 
Overall, the animal cruelty section of the criminal code remains almost the same as when it was first written in 1892. There needs to be a piece of legislation that accurately reflects our society's current views and morality when it comes to animal cruelty, not something from 120 years ago. Criminal code use for animal cruelty cases is limited, particularly in provinces like Alberta that has strong provincial welfare legislation. For various reasons, there is a strong preference among enforcement agencies to use their respective provincial acts when filing animal cruelty charges. Provincial acts, correction, provincial act prosecutions are performed because they are regulatory prosecutions, not criminal prosecutions. And as such, there is a lower burden of proof requirement for laying charges and obtaining convictions. Under provincial acts, offenders need only be found on compliance with the regulations or negligent as a result of not taking all reasonable care to prevent harm from occurring. Currently, under the criminal code, you must prove that an abuser is intended to harm the animals. It's very difficult to prove someone's intent. Are not even appointed to lay charges under the criminal code. If criminal code charges are warranted, those agencies are required to request assistance from law enforcement, such as the RCMP or municipal police agencies, to lay charges. Whether you are an animal rights advocate or an animal welfare advocate does not matter. What is wrong is the ruthless, callous exploitation of animals. The welfare of animals matter morally. We must be compassionate. We must avoid all unnecessary pain and suffering. It is our responsibility to be the voice of creatures who cannot speak for themselves. Exactly. As a province and as a nation, we need to make it our priority to come together and ensure the safety of our beloved animals. As Margaret Mead once said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Thank you. I get to, so I thought the pound, that'd be a great place to go look, rescue a dog. So I got to the pound and there was six dogs there, all different varying sizes and ages. And the dog I picked was this fat gray brown puppy that growled at me. And uh, I decided she was coming home with me, but of course my guilty conscience had to ask, what happens to the other puppies that I don't pick? Because it's not an SPCA, it's the pound, what happens? And they explained to me on uh, the following morning they'd all be euthanized because there was nobody that claimed them in three business days, so they were all going to be euthanized. So needless to say, I came home with six puppies. <laughs> Probably why I'm divorced, but... <laughs> Uh, I came home with six puppies and immediately started networking to try and find where I could take these little youngsters that I didn't need. I was feeding them out of my own pocket, trying to raise them with my children. 
And uh, I drove them two and a half hours to an SPCA and thought I'd done such a great job. And then the next day the phone rang and they had six more. So that's kind of how my adult life started in rescue. I couldn't say no and I just kept bringing them home until finally I decided to join a rescue group and actually do it legitimately. Um, I now foster 35 dogs for Second Chance Animal Rescue. Thank you. Everybody always says like, wow, that must be so crazy. But I mean, it's no different than going to work with anything else, right? You go to work with an office full of personalities you have to blend with. So you have your party animals. That's the dog that runs around and jumps and humps everything. <laughs> You've got your troublemaker, you know, that's the one that always bites everyone. It's very confrontational. You've got your workaholic, that's your tennis ball fiend that's just vibrating with anticipation. And then you've got <clears throat> that one weird guy that kind of pees on your stuff and gives you stink eye. <laughs> same, same, exact same as the office. And it is truly amazing to see so many of you here helping to make the world safer for our animals. As we all agree here today, animal abuse has to stop. In the words of Mark Twain, if you pick up a starving dog and make him prosperous, he will not bite you. This is the principal difference between dog and man. Our pets are living beings, as we've heard here so much this morning, that show us unconditional love. No matter what kind of day, a terrible day that we've had, where the whole world seems to be coming down on us, we go home and our pets are waiting for us. They're waiting to show us that unconditional love. They don't judge us on what we look like, what we wear, what we eat. They just love us for who we are. In fact, you no doubt heard the quote, a dog is the only thing on earth that loves you more than he loves himself. How could anyone harm such a beautiful being? Dogs will in fact continue to lick the hand of its abuser. Today we are here to bring change, to do our part to help all those abused animals, especially the ones that have lost their lives to, and forgive me because I know no better word to call them, than monsters that have found some kind of insane joy from hurting a defenseless, an a defenseless animal. And today, just by being here, you help change the lives of the animals of the future, the ones who will not be sacrificed. In the words of my favorite singer-songwriter, Sir Paul McCartney, you can judge a man's true character by the way he treats his fellow animals. And you are all my friends and all Charlie's friends for being here today and loving your animals because I know that you treat your friends just as, well, I should say you probably treat your animals better than your friends, and that's okay. <laughs> they all run and they play together but the day comes when one suddenly stops and looks into the distance. His bright eyes are intent. His eager body quivers. Suddenly, he begins to run from the group, flying over the green grass, his legs carrying him faster and faster. You have been spotted. And when you and your special friend finally meet, you cling together in a joyous reunion, never to be parted again. The happy kisses rain upon your face, your hands again caress the beloved head, and you look once more into those trusting eyes of your pet, so long gone from your life now, but never absent from your heart. And together, you then cross the Rainbow Bridge. Amen. Um.